Hey, everybody. Scaling global applications can be a challenge for every organization. And that's where Azure Front Door comes in. And we're going to be doing a deep dive into Azure Front Door today with Dong Ao. He's one of my teammates and a senior content developer for Azure Front Door. Check it out in this episode of Wired for Hybrid. Hey, Dong. How's it going today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Awesome. So you're coming in live from your home office. I'm coming in live from my closet, a.k.a. <laughs> my <laughs> studio. So uh, very cool. So very excited to chat with you today about Azure Front Door. So before we get in that, just, you know, kind of tell the Tell us a little bit about yourself as far as what you do at Microsoft besides uh, work on Azure Front Door. Well, um, I'm one of the content developer on the Azure networking team. Um, currently, I am uh, working on not only the Azure Front Door content, but also the uh, Azure Express Route content as well. Um, before, I used to also cover the uh, Azure Virtual Network Manager as well as Route Server uh, content. Now, mainly uh, focus around the, the two uh, what is it, areas of front door and express route, mainly creating new contents for the new features that are coming out. Uh, we got a couple uh, more features that are coming down in the next couple months that I'll be releasing. Um, but yeah, awesome. looking forward to uh, this uh, session here where we're going to cover uh, Azure front door and go a little bit deeper into it and tell you all about it. Very cool. Well, hey, let's go ahead and jump right in and tell us a little bit about Azure Front Door. Okay. Well, most people see Azure Front Door as just a, a global uh, load balancer, uh, but I see it as a lot more, right? And there's a reason why we name it the front door, uh, right? Azure Front Door. Uh, it's the entryway to your application, your global entryway actually to your web application. Um, but it's much more than that, there's more to the new generation of Azure Front Door. Uh, the new generation of Azure Front Door, the newer tiers of standard and premium combines the features that you see in our uh, old iteration of the Azure CDN uh, from Microsoft uh, and the old Azure Front Door Classic. But then now we also bring in the capability of uh, web application firewall that you can use along with it as well to protect your web application from, uh, from the front end, right? Um, we see Azure Front Door, uh, think of Azure Front Door as a layer between the internet and your backend services. It gives you the ability to control that tier that many, uh, many of the time you don't actually think about, right? Azure Front Door, um, we have, let's see, we have over about 150 edge locations, places uh, around the world. These edge locations are, um, entryways where end users can connect to to connect to your back end services right? and the way that we do that is we allow you to uh, establish connectivity to them uh, by using any cast right um, which means that your end users will connect to the closest edge location um, when they're reaching out to a particular website or a particular web application and then what would happen is that um, we do something called split TCP. So your uh, first initial connection is to the edge location. And then after that, a second TCP connection is established from the Azure front door edge location to your backend services to grab your content or whatever it is to load that particular website. Oh, very cool. So, so if I'm, you know, I can see this fitting into people listening that, you know, they're, uh, they're a global organization. They've got customers all across the world. And, you know, maybe they are located in the U.S., but they're a multinational company. So mm -hmm. Front Door kind of fits right in there from not only the ability for them to be able to get their customers closer to the content more quickly, mm -hmm. but I love that. Web application firewall is not part of that. So not only are they getting them quicker to the content, 
mm -hmm. or their application, but they're also protecting that experience by using web application firewall, which mm -hmm. is really a step up from you know traditional CDNs, content content distribution networks for those that aren't familiar with the CDN, that mm -hmm. all they do is simply put a copy of it and um in different locations. So I think that's what mm -hmm. that's a cool that's a cool feature of uh Azure front door. Yeah. And you should actually also think about it as that Azure front door by default, even before you apply web application firewall, is already doing a lot of that protecting for you, right? Um at these edge location, um, there's DDoS protection at the infrastructure level already there. So by enabling Azure front door, you're already protecting your backend services where uh, requests aren't going directly to your backend services. It's going to the Azure front door, right? So if there's a certain DDoS attack that's already happening, we already catch that at the edge and we already block that and that won't even go or reach to your backend services. Oh, yeah. very cool. That was an awesome foundational explanation for everybody of Azure front door and how it fits into an organization's workflow. I hear you got some demos for us and I know a lot of our viewers love to watch the demos so that they can get hands on. You ready to jump into some Azure front door live? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's uh, awesome. go ahead and hop into the portal here and uh, let's go ahead and deploy our Azure front door profile. So let's go ahead and click create here and let's go ahead and start. So here's the landing page for uh, creating Azure front door. As you can see, there are multiple offerings that we have under here. The old offerings that you'll see is under the explore other offerings. You can choose from our Azure front door, uh, our different flavor of Azure front doors uh, or the Azure front door classic, I mean, and then the other uh, Azure CDN. Uh, services as well. But today we are going to be mostly focusing on the newer tier of Azure Front Door. Uh, so we are going to go through the create experience here. Let's go ahead and do a custom create. This gives you the most flexibility. We'll go ahead and select a resource group here. I had a uh, Front Door uh, demo resource group that I created previously. Uh, here we enter a name for the Azure Front Door profile. This name is just for your own reference to know which Azure Front Door profile you're currently working with. So I'm just going to name this my Azure Front Door. We have two tiers here uh, that you can select from, the standard tier or the premium tier. As you can see, the premium tier is uh, focused around security uh, optimization. This has a couple extra features where uh, you can enable managed rules within uh, web application firewall, as well as bot protection and enable private link to your um, backend services. We'll cover private link a little bit later on um, in this demo. Uh, and for that reason, that's why we're going to go with the premium tier. Um, for right now, let's go ahead and skip over the secret. I want to be able to cover this later on when we upload our own um, Cert, uh, certificate and use that to uh, verify our domain. So we're going to go ahead and create an endpoint here. Your endpoint, think of an endpoint as a collection of domains that service the same application or uh, website. Right? For right now, uh, you can go ahead and enter in this particular uh, domain. We'll just do Contoso Ash right here. As you can see in this endpoint host name, uh, this is actually a unique name. In order for us to make this a unique name, uh, we actually add a, a hash right after your name here. And this is actually the URL to your front door profile. This is the, the front end. Uh, so you go to this particular URL, it will load up your particular website. And of course, we got to enable this uh, endpoint in order for it to work. So we'll leave that check. Go ahead and add it here. This screen right here is going to look very familiar to you. This is, uh, we call this the front door manager. This is where you configure uh, the routes. Um, within the routes, there are domains, origin groups, um, which are the backend services that are having similar uh, traffic delivered to them. And then on the right side here, we see security policy. Security policy are the uh, web application firewall rules that you'd be applying to a particular uh, endpoint. Uh, we will go ahead. Let's go ahead and add uh, a web application firewall uh, policy here. 
So I'm just going to do my security policy. And as of right now, let's just select the domain that we have. We currently don't have any custom domains yet. Uh, we'll change this in a little bit once we configure a uh, custom domain uh, later on in the demo. And since I don't have any uh, web application firewall um, resources currently created, we'll go ahead and create one right now as well. Uh, doing it through here it actually saves you uh, some time and also some confusion because when you create a web ap application firewall resource, there's actually a uh, tier that you have to select or a uh, specific service. Right? There's a specific web application firewall for Azure Front Door Classic, and there's one for the newer uh, the newer tier. So make sure you select the right one if you create the web application firewall um, beforehand or afterward. And here we'll go ahead and add uh, bot protection to it as well. And then I'm going to hit uh, select save. And that is it on creating the front door profile. I can actually add a route in here as well at the same time. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add a route. So with a route, this is how you configure uh, how traffic is being delivered to the backend uh, resources that is servicing that particular website or uh, content that the customer is trying to receive. So let's go ahead and add a route here. Um, before uh, this demo, I actually created a couple, or not created, I set up a couple of web applications that will be servicing this particular demo. So I'm going to do registration. I have two uh, web applications. One is for registering a vehicle, and the other one is to renew your uh, license. So I'm going to do registration first here. And then I will keep this domain here. We'll go through the steps on how does who uh, add a custom domain and then uh, actually change the domain so it actually points to the our, our custom domain there. This pattern to match. So this is how um, Azure Front Door will read the request that's coming in. So this is right after your, uh, your host name that is being passed. Uh, Azure Front Door, the route will match whatever is after the slash. So currently, as you can see right here, uh, by default, we have a slash with a star, um, which is a wildcard, meaning that it will match any uh, part of the path um, that is being requested by the end user. Um, so pretty much all this would do is it would forward this particular path uh, to the backend resource. Uh, we'll keep it uh, like that for now. We'll Later on, we'll tinker around with it and uh, change the pattern to match and see how we can alter some of the routing um, in, uh, was it, with the profile. As you can see here, uh, the particular type of protocols we have uh, that we can select from uh, that the Azure Front Door profile will accept is you can either select HTTP only, HTTPS only, or, uh, or both. As of right now, let's just do both because um, sometime when you enter into your browser, you type the uh, was it the URL without HTTPS. So this is how you allow that traffic to be accepted uh, at the Azure Front Door Edge. And so then the neat little thing here. Just a quick question here. So uh, if I were to put just HTTPS here, and then mm -hmm. I did put HTTP in the browser, it's going to fail. But if I have this, then if I put HTTP in, it's, is it still going to flip over to being secure or is it going to stay on unsecure? Well, that's what the next little checkbox is going to do. Ah. For you. It's going to redirect that traffic over to HTTPS. And actually, awesome. I believe our web browser is actually smart enough now. I think Edge has by default a setting in there where it makes, uh, makes you go to the HTTPS. But if you do have that unchecked, then yeah, of course it will initiate the traffic uh, using HTTP. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. So yep. So we'll just keep it at that for now. Just keep it uh, by default, uh, accepting all the um, all HTTPS uh, or HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And then we'll leave this as check. Like I said, it'll redirect that traffic to HTTPS. Um, so let's see here. We got next thing we have here is uh, origin group. Origin group is um, a logical grouping of backend resources that will service the same um, type of traffic. So let's go ahead and I 
don't believe it has one. So let's go ahead and create a new origin group here. And let's go ahead and name this, let's see, believe I have a couple web servers, so let's just call this web server origins here. And we're gonna go ahead and add a couple origins. And then I will go ahead and add my first origin here. So I'm just gonna call this web server one. I have two web servers that's hosting this registration website. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. Um, here we go. Uh, we see here the type of origins that we can add. Here's a long list of types of origins that you can have. So the type of origin uh, has to have a public IP. So it doesn't actually have to be um, in Azure. It could be on premises or uh, hosted in a uh, different cloud um, provider. Okay. The reason why we have this list here is it actually makes it a lot easier for you to select uh, your Azure resources. Okay. Uh, say, for example, you, you have a web server and there's a public IP attached to it. Uh, you don't want to have to hop over and find your virtual machine, uh, find that public IP. I can just go ahead and go to public IP here, and it will actually load up the um, public IP uh, resources that I have that I can uh, that I can use. So as of right now, I believe this is the one that I want. Yep, web server one. And you can see here it'll pass in. I didn't configure any host headers or, um, on the back end, so you're just going to see the plain old public IP here. Uh, and then the configuration here that we have, uh, by default, these are all loaded in for you. Um, so we're just going to keep everything by default here. Uh, the, currently, as of right now, those back end uh, web servers are actually accepting only HTTP traffic. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of our traffic on port 80. Uh, let's see here. You can also configure priority and wait on these uh, particular uh, backend services. The priority uh, will give, um, let's see, if you have multiple uh, origins in the origin group, you can set one to have a higher priority in the, uh, than the other to, so they service more of the traffic. Um, and then you can also, along with that, you can configure weight on how you want to distribute the, uh, the, the distribution of traffic. Say for example, uh, if we do, uh, what is it for, if we do a weight of one, that's three, and then the other one of seven, uh, out of every 10 uh, requests, the first origin will receive three of the traffic and the uh, second origin will receive seven of the traffic. Um, and then down here, we have private link. As of right now, I'm not gonna enable private link. We'll do this at a later time, as you can see. Uh, the reason why you would want to is because currently the traffic between the Azure front door edge and this particular origin is done over HTTP. We want that to be secure, uh, but we don't wanna have to change the, the ports, right? So we'll enable private link later on in order to have that communication between uh, the Azure front door and the backend service. Okay. And of course, we want this particular origin to be enabled. So we'll leave that check and I'll go ahead and add the first origin. Let me go ahead and add that second web server now. And then I'll keep everything the same. And then I'll go ahead and add it. So everything is fine and dandy here. Uh, you have the option of enabling session infinity here. Um, the reason for that is uh, you want, say for example, you want a particular type of traffic uh, to end up on the exact same origin server, you want to enable this, uh, and all feature requests from the end user to be on that, you want to enable this. As of right now, uh, I don't have anything on the web server that requires this, so I'll leave that unchecked for now. Next up is uh, configuring the health probe on, uh, on how Azure Front Door detects if the origin um, services are uh, up and running. Uh, so as of right now, uh, we'll just keep this as all as default. The uh, root of the web server has a file in there uh, that it will detect and show that the, uh, it will actually get a 200 response and it will show that the web server is up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, is that uh, let's say for example, uh, all of your origin uh, services for some reason is uh, down or like the health probe is considered down for all of your services. Azure Front Door actually will see it as uh, 
healthy, meaning that uh, if all your services are uh, all your origin services are down, it will actually still continue sending traffic. I believe this is a mechanism to make sure that your uh, your services are still um, what is it? Your backend services are still servicing requests that are still coming in. So that's the reason why they they set it up this way. And then we got this uh, load balancing uh, configuration uh, that you can do. Uh, the reason for, uh, what is it? This option allows you to configure uh, the latency uh, for the load balancing group, meaning that uh, how long between, what is it, in the sample size, what's the range of latency that the health probe should get a response back in order for it to actually continue sending? So as of right now, our default is the 50 millisecond latency. If it goes beyond that, then that particular, um, what is it, that particular origin won't be receiving that particular track. And that is it for origin group. So I'll go ahead and add this particular origin group to it. Our next field here is the origin path. Um, this is where you want to enter in an additional path. Say, for example, your backend service uh, has an additional path in between the uh, web page. This is where, uh, for example, uh, I have an origin server that has a path of vehicle registration slash then my web page. Instead of having our customer type in that additional path, what I can do is I can enter that path in here so it looks invisible to our customer. And then, oh, cool. uh, uh, and then, yeah, that path will actually be forwarded onto our origin. And uh, this next part here is the forwarding protocol. This is, uh, of course, as the name says, it's the type of protocol that will be forwarded to the backend uh, service. So as of right now, whoops, match coming in. Um, let's see here. What will actually happen here is that if you make an HTTP uh, request, since we're, re, re, uh, we're redirecting it, it will actually just forward it as an HTTPS request to the backend. And then we have this function of enabling caching. As of right now, we're going to leave this off, but we'll turn it back on because this is a very neat feature of Azure Front Door, and it's one of the main feature, actually, of Azure Front Door. Uh, and we'll tinker with this a little bit later on to see how that worked in uh, the re uh, seeing the response time when we make a request to the, the, um, the origin. So I'll go ahead and add this, and we will go ahead and create this Azure Front Door profile. There we go. Right. So how long does it usually take to deploy Front Door? Uh, it's usually very quick. Uh, give it about five minutes at tops. We're going to see uh, it populate here fairly shortly. Um, it will actually take up to upward up to about 10 to 15 minutes for your um, what is it your configuration to actually load to all of the edge locations. So depending on uh, depending on how long that would take. Right? So uh, 15. Well, we have 150 edge locations, so 15 minutes is fairly good uh, to uh, to get that out there. Yeah, that seems pretty good since you have to send a lot of ones and zeros around the world. Uh, uh, we can't expect everything's instantaneous even though we want it to be instantaneous right i've i've had very uh was it good uh response time actually like I've, i'll purge oh so there's a feature that we can do uh meaning purge contents uh that are being cached usually uh we would get or we're told that it would take about 15 minutes but i've gotten a fairly quick like usually within a minute or two that content's cached from our, our purge from our edge location. So depending on what you're trying to do, uh, the response time of uh, a beginning done is very quick. Nice. So it's almost done here. Uh, reason why it's taking a little longer because um, what is it? all those configurations that we're doing, right? we're configuring a route. Uh, I believe we're setting up a web application firewall as well. But as you can see, the resource is deployed already. And I guess that's even faster than the five minutes that I said. So we'll go ahead and go uh, go to our Azure Front Door profile here. All right. So let's just take a look again on how things are being configured. So as you can see here on the left side, uh, we have a couple of settings that we can take a look at. Uh, our Front Door Manager, let's just hop into here real quick. And you'll see it's going to look very familiar to our Create screen. 
All right. So on here, this is where uh, you can add uh, additional endpoints. So say, for example, you have another domain or another set of domains that uh, you want to set up uh, in your Azure Front Door profile, uh, you can add another endpoint here. Uh, previously, uh, with Azure Front Door Classic, uh, you were only able to create one endpoint per profile. Now, with uh, the newer tier of Azure Front Door, you can create up to 10 endpoints in here. Um, so if you click into Add Endpoint here, you go through the same configuration process for the, uh, when we created the Azure Front Door profile initially. So we won't be doing that. Let's just go ahead and hop into this uh, one that we have here that we created in the initial create process. So you can see the screen is very similar to that. Uh, in here, you can add additional routes, which we will in a little bit for uh, my other backend service. Let's just take a look and see what we have going on here so far. So as of right now, if I were to go to this URL, I believe my website should load because I didn't do anything fancy with it. it should forward the traffic that we request um, from the front end um, and uh, go directly to the origin server. Yeah. If you're seeing that your page isn't loading when you're going to the Azure Front Door profile, some of the most uh, common mistakes is by leaving the forwarding uh, protocol as default. Um, from what I can see here, my backend services only is uh, accepting HTTP traffic, and I had the forwarding protocol set to both. Or, or actually, what I had it was forwarding the uh, based on the incoming request. Since I had it, the configuration to redirect all traffic to HTTPS, the forwarding protocol would go to HTTPS in the backend, and therefore the web page would not load. So make sure your forwarding protocol is set correctly to what your origin services will accept. And this would uh, this is what it would look like once you configure that correctly. As you can see, the backend uh, service is showing my websites. And if I were to hit refresh, we should see it bounce back and forth between the, uh, the two web servers. And as you can see there, uh, I'm I was able to get to web server one by refreshing a few times. Very cool. Yeah, that's a, awesome. I appreciate you, uh, you know, jumping in and just reminding everybody that, you know, these things, there's a lots of, lots of things going on here and, you know, making sure you really have an idea of how these things are all connected um, and making sure you have those settings all lined up. Otherwise uh, you run into those little things. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So let's uh, go ahead and hop back into the portal again. Uh, we're gonna uh, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and add a custom domain to um, this Azure Front Door profile. As you can see, the URL isn't the most pretty. Um, you wouldn't be giving this to a customer to tell them to go to your website. Uh, it's taking quite some time to type this in. So let's go ahead and configure a custom domain, something a little bit friendlier that uh, people can remember. Okay. So back in the Azure um, Front Door uh, profile here. Let's go ahead and head over to domains, which is our uh, second option here under settings. Here, this is where you can add your custom domain. I actually have a custom domain uh, that I own myself called contosoazure.com. So let's go ahead and add that custom domain here. So as we walk through here, uh, I have actually have my uh, domain uh, managed by uh, using uh, Azure DNS. So it actually makes the configuration process a whole lot easier than if you're to manage it through a third-party provider. Although we do have an option that allows you to do that as well. So let's go through some of the options here. So the domain type, um, we have non-Azure validated domains and then Azure pre-validated domains. What are the difference between these two? Um, Non-Azure validated domains are domains that you um, bought from a third party, such as GoDaddy, and you're configuring it with your Azure front door profile. Azure pre-validated domains is for services that you already configured the domain for. Say, for example, you had a Azure app service uh, that you configure with a particular domain. You can select this option, which would actually um, reduce the configuration process. I believe you click into this, some of the options go away. Yes. So as, uh, as you can see, I click into this, the Azure DNS, where a lot of the verification uh, that needs to be done goes away, and then you can select uh, that particular type of domain. As of right now, uh, we're starting fresh, so I'm, we're gonna go through the validation process and see how things goes there. 
So uh, we see here, the next option here we have is DNS management. Uh, we recommend you uh, doing uh, with Azure DNS. It just makes the configuration process a lot easier. And I've actually noticed the uh, validation or the verification time a lot faster and quicker than if you were to do it through your, um, your third party uh, configuration or settings. So let's just go ahead and do that. I already created uh, a DNS zone with my uh, domain. So uh, we'll take a look at that once I set up uh, the, uh, was it? Once I select the DNS zone and configure uh, the domain to add to Azure Front Door. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my DNS zone here uh, that I created, contosoazure.com. Actually, let's go ahead and create a subdomain here that we can use uh, for the registration website. I'm gonna do registration.contosoazure.com uh, that we can use uh, for this uh, configuration. All right. So now that we have this uh, new subdomain here that we're going to be adding, we're going to have to configure uh, a few more things here. Uh, if you want to enable HTTPS, you need to configure, uh, what is it, you have to use a certificate in order to um, set this up. You either can use Azure Manage, which means Azure will uh, create a certificate for you that you can use, or you can bring your own certificate, uh, your own certificate that you have. Uh, either a wildcard certificate or an Apex uh, domain certificate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do the bring your own certificate because that's what most people would uh, would do. They would they already have a certificate that they can use uh, to verify their domain. And in here, you can see I don't have any secrets. Um, that's a problem, right? Uh, that means that my Azure front door uh, hasn't located where my certificate is where most people would uh, have their certificate is they would store it in uh, Azure Key Vault. So let's, uh, let's actually do that, right? Uh, let's go, uh, I'm gonna back out of this. We're gonna have to go through this add domain uh, again in a little bit, but let's go ahead and hop over to, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and hop over to how we can set this up uh, with Key Vault, right? So one of the configurations that you have to do is you have to actually give Azure Front Door access to your key vault so that it can pull the certificate that you have uploaded there. So you can do that from actually here where you go to secrets and you should be able to see, you should go add certificates from here and you can see, you'll actually see your key vault. And let's see if it actually populates some of my certificate here. So these are the certificate that I have and actually, uh, before, let's see here. Let me see if it actually allows me to, because although you can see their certificate, sometimes you may get an error that says that Azure Front Door doesn't actually have access to it. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. And the certificate I have here is my wildcard um, domain certificate. Uh, so that's why we're doing the registration uh, .contosoazure.com. So let's go ahead here and see if I get an error of some sort. If I don't, that means I most likely gave it permission um, already. And it looks like it accepted it. So I, I already gave it permission. If we didn't have permission, where would uh, where would we go for that? So what we'll Azure even, Active Directory? Yeah, well, yeah, we would do it through, uh, let's see here. Let's actually, while that loads, let's, uh, let me go ahead and hop over to that key ball. So you would actually need to give it um, access, RBAC access to it. So okay. I would actually go into here, into access policy, and you actually see that I actually created one already. But if uh, this isn't here already, what I would do is I would go ahead and create it, and I would create uh, an access policy that says get and list um, secrets. And, okay. and then what I would do is I would actually search for the service principle, Microsoft, dot Azure leads front door. Yep. So it's this one, um, Azure front door CDN. If this doesn't populate for you, you most likely need to create the service principle first. Um, within our documentation, you'll see uh, either the PowerShell or CLI command to create this particular service principle. Um, be aware though, there are different service principle IDs. Um, the one that you're seeing here on the screen is specific to um, CDN and Azure Front Door uh, standard in premium. The one for Azure Front Door Classic has a different um, 
service principle. So make sure you use the right one in order, uh, or else you won't be able to see the, the service principle. Or, sorry, you won't be able to see the certificate show up from the uh, secrets menu from Azure Front Door. Cool. Thanks for yep. walking through that. Yeah, once you do that, you should see, uh, let me head back to Azure Front Door here. Believe that operation is complete. Yep, should be good to go. And we should see that certificate actually load up now. There we go. So here is my wildcard certificate. Let's pop in here real quick and we used to see I had to blur out everything. Okay, we won't uh, take a look at the actual content of it. So I will just leave it like that. Um, let's head back to the domain and let's go ahead and add that domain uh, again, right? All right, so let's walk through this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that custom domain, the one that I wanna do for registration. And then I'm going to select my bring my own certificate. And now I should see that in the list. There we go. And I'm just going to keep my TLS version as 1.2 as the latest one. And then I'll go ahead and add it. It's going to take a couple moments here for it to populate into this particular list. There are a couple of things that we need to do in order to actually validate and verify that we own the domain. Um, that's how we make sure that uh, there's no domain takeovers and things like that. Also throw in here while we're uh, waiting here. Uh, I'm one of those people that certificate challenged. I seem to like it's like every time I have to work with certificates, it's like I like forgot how to what a certificate is. That this is why you use wildcard certificates because it allows you to be able to do these custom names. Whereas if you just did a non wildcard certificate, you would have to have a certificate for every one of those names that you've created, which mm -hmm. creates a ton of complexity. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we, uh, let's see here. So we got, got to populate here. There's a couple things that we need to do before we can actually use this domain. So let's, uh, let's take a look here and see what we need to do. I wanna go ahead and first, I wanna go ahead and associate this domain to an endpoint, that particular endpoint that we uh, configured earlier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually select that particular route that we had uh, earlier as well. So now if I were to go to registration.contosoaction.com, it should take me to my uh, back end, uh, to those websites that I had configured earlier. So let's go ahead and associate that. And once you associate, we're gonna have to do, uh, leave a verification and then, and then after that, we'll have to validate uh, the domain. And you do that by creating a, what is it? A couple records in your Azure DNS and that's how we verify things. Yeah, I found from stuff that I've worked on that it's much easier to have. I've got a ton of stuff over at Namecheap and I found it's much easier to have things in Azure DNS when you're going through these processes than it is for a third party, uh, third party uh, domain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, okay. So now that we associate to, you can actually see the DNS state change uh, where it tells me that I need to create a CNAME record uh, to associate uh, Contoso, uh, was it Contoso Azure? registration.contosoazure.com to that particular endpoint that we have. So let's go ahead and create that particular C name here. Um, the nice thing about, let's see, the nice thing about Azure DNS here is when you do it here, you don't have to go to the Azure DNS site uh, configured. I actually uh, have seen quite a few people um, talk about having difficulty uh, about this particular process because what they do is they would configure the C name record from uh, the Azure DNS side. And then what they would do is that they'll actually try to look up Azure front door. And uh, as of this particular time, there's no way to configure uh, the newer tier Azure front door because it's not listed in the service. So the way that you work around this is actually by creating the CNAME record through uh, this, uh, what is it, through this channel, through the through the domain configuration, the uh, front door profile itself. So let's go ahead and add this. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and add this record really quick. Okay, uh, I believe that is good. So now we can see the DNS state change to traffic is delivered. Not quite though. Uh, that's just to set up the uh, configure your scening. And now we got to make sure uh, we validate that we actually uh, that domain is uh, was it we actually own that domain. And the way we do that is we actually create a TXT record within um, Azure DNS for that particular domain. And to do that, just go ahead and click this little add button, and it's going to go ahead and add that for us there. And we can go take a look. Let's just hop over. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's just hop over to Azure DNS real quick and just take a look at those records that were created here under um, uh, Contoso Azure uh, DNS zone. So you can see right here, these were the two uh, records that were created, one for the registration uh, .contosoazure.com, and then the next one is the, the what is it, the registration the authentication to make sure that we own, or that domain is exactly who we said own it. Okay, so all fine and dandy there. Now let's go ahead and test it out. We should, uh, let's see, let's just go back, double check real quick in the domain, make sure everything's all green, fine and dandy. Yep, so we can see here, validation state, change to approve. Once I did that earlier, it was in that pending state. Um, and if I were to, this right here, it's a little wonky. I think there might be some kind of portal uh, display issue. But as you can there see, I just hit refresh and it shows it again. Uh, I had this happen to me quite a few times. I couldn't figure out why, and it, I guess I just clicked the refresh and it <laughs> it shows up uh, correctly again. But, uh, yeah, little weird bug there. Um, okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and go to our uh, registration.contosoazure.com to see if it, uh, our custom domain uh, has worked correctly. There we go. There. Now, as you can see, went to the registration.contosoazure.com uh, and we're able to load our page. And if I were to refresh this a few times here, we should see it bounce back and forth between Web Server 1 and Web Server 2. And there you go. Now that we have a custom domain, uh, we can share this with our uh, customers and they can uh, once it, use it to access our, our backend services or our, or our websites. Let's go ahead and configure a few more. Uh, once it, a couple more websites here. Well, actually, let's not do a website. Let's go ahead and have a media content and let's uh, play around with the, the caching and see how that uh, helps accelerate uh, what is it end users uh, and their experience. I want to go ahead and add an, uh, add a new origin in here uh, that we're going to reach out to a, a test a video file that I have uh, located actually in a storage account. So let me go ahead and configure that real quick. Uh, let me see if I can get us back into the Azure portal here so you can see that. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, go ahead and add a new origin group and we're going to direct that to our uh, was it storage account uh, where that particular uh is it where that particular test video file is located so i'm just going to do a media origin here i'll go ahead and add that origin here i'm going to go ahead and select my storage account and then we'll keep this all the same here and i'll go ahead and select add Okay, I'll keep everything else the same uh, in terms of the health, health probe and the load balancing uh, configuration. And then we should be able to just redirect our traffic over to our storage uh, storage account. Give it a couple seconds here for it to create that. Let me go and find that particular path. I'm sure it's taking some time to create that particular origin. So this is good for those instances where you have like, you know, in this case, you're doing like a video, you know, maybe somebody has, you know, you have different sorts of things where you want to get people connected to. This makes it easier for you once you get everything set up to get everybody mm -hmm. in there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you can share all sorts of, uh, what is it, all sorts of contents right here. So one of the most uh, common one is um, people are trying to share uh, video files, right? Um, the thing here that I want to show is that uh, video files are very, what is it? It can require a lot of bandwidth on your backend services. And in order for us to limit having to, uh, was it, reach out to the origin server every single time to 
get that information, what can happen is that Azure Front Door can actually cache uh, your particular video file or your contents that are frequently uh, being accessed by our end users uh, that they can uh, that they can use. And what would happen is um, it will limit the amount of traffic that your origin server would receive. And you can set this up uh, that your front door edge can cache this for uh, a certain amount of time. By default, if you don't configure anything, Azure Front Door can cache the uh, content from between one and three days. But even by configuring caching for uh, frequently retrieved traffic for just a few seconds. Just imagine, uh, uh, when is it? You have thousands or millions of users requesting that particular type of traffic. Uh, that uh, that timer actually gets refreshed every single time that that particular content is being uh, retrieved, right? And you should actually think about it as a uh, protection mechanism for your backend services uh, as, since the content is being cached on the Azure front door, it's not being frequently being retrieved from the origin and limiting uh, attacks and requests that uh, you would normally take if the traffic were going directly to your backend services. Okay, so now that I have this particular uh, origin created, let's go ahead and see how we can redirect some of the traffic. There's a video file in there that I have called tests, uh, it's test video uh, that we're going to try to get to. And how can I do that? We're going to actually uh, use a feature uh, in here that is a very powerful tool called a rule set. A rule set is how um, Azure Front Door will actually um, read through the requests and decide what to do next. So the way that Azure Front Door works is that when you make a request, the host name is matched to an Azure Front Door profile. Then after that, Azure Front Door looks at the path, which was uh, in the routing uh, configuration that we did. It reads the path and see uh, which, actually, which route it should match uh, to. After it does that, uh, it does, um, it runs through our WAF configuration to make sure that um, the request is what it's supposed to be. It's not an attack of some sort. It's an actual request that is uh, requesting legitimate information. After that, what happens is the rules engine will kick in. The rules engine is how it will further uh, break down the traffic, whether if you want to route it based on uh, if your traffic is coming from a mobile device or a desktop, we can determine that at the front door edge and route your traffic uh, to the very specific backend origin without having, uh, basically you're controlling that there at the front door edge rather than having it go to your origin and then determining, hey, this web server shouldn't be servicing mobile uh, traffic it, uh, and then having to reroute. You're doing that at the very, um, at the very beginning of the request and then therefore uh, limiting the amount of round trip times that we need to take to, to request that type of traffic or retrieve that type of traffic. Um, okay, so let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's go ahead and hop over to the rule set. We're gonna create a new rule set here. So inside a rule set, uh, you can create, I believe up to 10 rules uh, in here that it will uh, diagnose one by one. As you can see in here, there's actually a little checkbox that you can do to stop evaluating. Say you have multiple rules doing certain things, you can stop that, uh, stop processing the rest of the rules um, by selecting that particular checkbox. So let's go ahead and create a rule here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and say, we are going to route to media. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, what is it? I'm going to go ahead and add a condition in here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it in the request URL. And then what I'm going to do is that we're going to request that particular particular uh, file, uh, that media file. The media file is actually named test underscore uh, media, or sorry, test underscore video dot MP4. So what I'm going to do here is when I type in 
our domain, our registration.contosoazure.com, and then I'm going to do a slash. I'm going to request that particular video file. Um, so I'm going to configure in here where, let's see if I do request URL contains, and if it contains a value of video, I'm going to make sure, uh, I'm going to configure an action that it would route to that particular origin. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm not going to do any string transform. As you can see here, you can uh, do further processing of that particular path. You can do uh, to lowercase, to uppercase. You can trim uh, part of the path. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to keep it simple here where we're, uh, we're taking a look at if the URL, the request URL contains the word video in there, we're going to route it to the origin that has the uh, we're going to route, route it to the origin that has the uh, video file, which is the storage account. So in here, what we can do is we can do a route configuration override. What this does is that it allows me to override what I have configured already in a route. So if I go ahead and select here, we have the option to select a different origin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and override the origin group that was selected when we created the route. Go ahead and select uh, yes to override origin group, and now I'm going to go ahead and select the media. So you actually don't have to have your origin group associated to a, a route in order for traffic to be routed to it. And this is one way uh, to do that is, uh, or this is the way to do that is to use a route, uh, a rule set in order to configure that. In here, in some of the configuration are very similar. You can for uh, for the traffic, uh, depending on the protocol that you want. We'll go ahead and match it uh, incoming. And then uh, we will leave caching disabled for the time being. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, oh, let's see here. Go ahead and save this. Oops, I forgot to put the rule names. Uh, this is to media. Once we create this rule, what I will have to do is I need to associate it to that particular route so that when we go to our domain, our Contoso uh, Azure.com domain requesting for that file, uh, it will know how to process, or it will use this rule set as uh, part of its uh, route processing, uh, processing process. And this is just one of the many ways that you can use a rule set. Um, the rule set is a very powerful tool. It allows you to manipulate the, uh, the requests that is coming in, right? As you can see, a couple of the other options that we had in there when I was uh, pulling down the condition uh, actually, let's pull up slide. Yep. So in slide 19 right here, you can see all the um, specific types of uh, conditions that you can uh, can use uh, in here. Uh, allows you to manipulate the uh, what's it? The particular type of request header, the particular path, uh, and then let's see here, and even on the client port and server. Uh, and then after that, you can uh, apply certain types of actions to that which we'll see in slide 20. Um, actually, this is where I wanted us to, to look at, where you can modify the request or response header, as well as redirect or rewrite the particular URL into a different um, to a different path that you want. So now that I, uh, let me see, back to our tutorial here. Now that the uh, particular rule set has been created, let's go ahead and associate that to our um, route here. So uh, heading back to the front door manager, I'm going to go ahead and select that particular route that I had created earlier. And let's go ahead and scroll down here where we see rule sets. This is at the very bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and select select that rule set. It's a little off screen here, but you can see it loading as I select it. And then I'm going to go ahead and update this. This will take a couple minutes for here to uh, to, uh, when is it distribute uh, when is the information to all of our edge location and we should see this in a couple moments here so that rule set <laughs> thing is 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 pretty handy that seems like kind of the way to go for you know doing some of these you know just kind of like some granular stuff whether it be like you did showing getting to the media or if there's like specific places you want to make sure people go that seems like a a really good way to be able to to manage that for those organizations because a lot of organizations have that is that they have you know multiple places within a application that they want people to go to 
So that's super cool. Thanks for walking. Yeah, that. That it was... really like this. Um, was it having the rule set uh, configuration? It allows you to take a lot of that uh, processing that would be normally done on your web server, right? To do the redirect or the URL rewrite or to send it to a different server. Now we can do it directly on the Azure front door. So that the, the uh, was it the amount of time that it would take normally to do that is literally cut in half or even even more, right? depending on the distance of where your origin server is compared to the, the front door um, edge location. Pretty cool. So we just take a look at those rule set uh, right here that I have configured. Um, taking a look at how we have this configured, as of right now, it's looking for the request URL if it contains the word video. And then what we have next here is the action that will be applied to, uh, to the uh, uh, path once uh, once Azure Front Door processes it. So what we have here is there will be a URL rewrite that's happening, and it's looking for a particular source pattern. In this case, it's all um, all source pattern, um, and then we were going to rewrite that to include the path of media. This is because the test video file located in the storage account has a media folder in there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to preserve unmatched path. So anything that wasn't matched, we're going to uh, keep it. And then we'll keep this the same here with our route uh, configuration override, uh, where originally in the route, and then where the origin uh, is located. And we're going to forward it using the same incoming request. And for right now, let it happen. So to see that happening, we're going to hop over to our test uh, virtual machine here. And then we're going to try to load up that page and request the file for the video. OK. And before I even do that, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring up the developer tool uh, for us to see here. And then I'm going to do media. And we're going to take a look at this. Okay. So here we go. We're going to go to that particular. The reason why I'm bringing this up is we're going to take actually take a look at the response time of how long it took for us to request this particular media file. Um, so I'm going to go to registration at Azure Toso, and we're going to go to this video file here. And if I click into this, we can actually see how long it took for it actually to get a response back from uh, that server. So as of right now, this particular test VM, I am actually uh, created in the West US region. And the uh, origin server uh, that is hosting this particular video clip is actually located in Japan East. So you can actually see that it took us roughly 680 seconds to get a response back. That is quite a long time in, uh, in networking in order to uh, get a response back. So how can we improve this, um, this response time? Right? Uh, and one way to do that is by enabling caching on Azure Front Door. Um, Azure Front Door, uh, you can enable caching uh, in multiple places. Uh, you can enable it initially on the routing configuration that we saw when we were configuring the route. And we can also do it uh, when we're creating a, a rule set rule where you can enable caching. Uh, so I'm going to hop back into the Azure portal here. I'm going to go ahead and enable that uh, caching uh, on the on the rule set there. So let me go ahead and enable caching right here. And we're going to go ahead and enter in some of the information here. I'm going to use uh, select use query string. And I'm going to keep uh, compression off here. And with the uh, caching behavior here, you can select if you're trying to honor the origin. So basically, uh, your origin server may have a, uh, a caching configuration in the response uh, that you want to enable. Or we can configure it here um, directly on the, uh, was it, on the Azure front door uh, configuration where we can always override it, uh, meaning we're setting our own uh, caching time uh, on Azure front door. So uh, that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an override always. And I'm just going to set this to, uh, let's just do, 
Let's go three days. Let's just put it here. We can set this for a shorter period of time. It really depends on how long you want that particular type of information. For um, content that never changes, then you want to have a longer ca uh, caching period. For um, certain content, such as like a home page where it may change uh, every other week or something like that, you may want to have a much shorter caching period for, uh, for that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that there. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then we should see this reflect uh, on the uh, when we make a request. So front door, caching only gets better uh, when you use it more. Right? So that first initial request, it still needs to reach out to the origin uh, in order to retrieve it. But any um, following requests uh, from our customer, it doesn't need to reach out to the origin because it already has that information uh, cache and it can be um, grabbed from. The cache is done at the front door edge, so it actually depends on uh, which front door edge location is currently caching it. So whoever is reaching it, uh, when the end user reach out, they reach out to the closest edge location. So that edge location may not have it uh, on the first request, but every sequential request uh, after that, it will uh, pull from the cache uh, as long as that content is still cached on the front door edge. So let's take a look here real quick, and we're going to hop back over to our test VM here, and we're going to uh, take a look and see if we can make that request and see if we're getting uh, that particular video clip from the cache or are we getting it from the origin server. So let me go ahead and open up a new in-private browser here real quick, and I'm going to bring up this. I'm going to bring up the developer tool so we can see what's going on uh, within the request. So I'm going to go ahead and go to registration and then I'm going to go to that video file again. So let's just take a look here. Now we get a TCP uh, hit for a cache. This means that it actually retrieved the content from our front door edge. Now let's just take a look at the timing here and see what we got for the timing. This is what more of what I was expecting on our response time. So it, we definitely reduced the response time of when it actually reached out to, uh, to the back end uh, by quite a bit, right? uh, 600 milliseconds compared to uh, seven milliseconds here, and then we're able to grab um, the content. Uh, That's cool. So th basically the way the caching works, if you're, to break it on for you know somebody that's familiar with how things work on premises and it's very similar to the way dns records work is is when you're caching dns records right because mm -hmm. when you click that cache we're not sending your content everywhere we're waiting for somebody to hit that edge and then they bring that over to the origin and then mm -hmm. that is available for everybody that comes for the next times right Yep. And okay. the nice thing about the Azure front door um, caching mechanism is that it's always one step ahead. So it always uh, pulls the information that you would think you would need. So say, for example, you got this video file, uh, you're pulling the first, um, uh, was it segment or so, Azure front door thinks ahead and it will pull the next segment in preparation for if you need that next set of information, right? Uh, next set of contents. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that was an awesome run through. We got a, you know, a ton of great stuff there. Uh, you know, for, for those people that are, you know, looking to roll out front door, where's the best place for them to get started? You know, this video did a great job, but chances are, you know, they, they want to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, where's the best place for, uh, everybody to get started, uh, diving deeper into, front door? Well, you can get started uh, by looking at our uh, Azure front door content and right? our documentation set in there. It'll get you started with yeah, getting yourself set up with it, going through the different features that are included in Azure front door. And then you can go to our architecture center. There um, are some great contents that have just been released out uh, recently uh, where it involves multi-tenancy for uh, using with Azure front door or how to use our uh, different uh, load balancing uh, what is it, services in conjunction with Azure Front Door. So you can put a traffic manager 
uh, in front of your Azure front door profile. Uh, and then along with that, you can have uh, application gateway or um, load balancers in your origins, right? To further uh, distribute the traffic within your virtual network as well. Very cool. And we'll, we'll definitely uh, put some links to some of the, the most common uh, content that'll be helpful for people uh, in the show notes. Anything else that you can think of like, hey, you know, these are the top things that, you know, people need to know that we haven't covered that would be good for people out the door? Or do you think we're we're all ready to go to build some front door? Uh, so there are a couple other features in Azure Front Door that I didn't get a chance to cover, which is the, the reporting. Uh, Azure Front Door has uh, various reporting that you can see uh, live or Sorry, not live. It takes a while uh, to collect it, but you can see it um, information about the number of cache hits that you're getting or where the traffic is coming from to your Azure front door. Uh, and then you can export that uh, out to, um, what is it, your log analytics to take, uh, what is it, to view that. Uh, one other thing that I didn't get a chance to cover also is private link. Uh, it's only available with uh, the premium premium uh, tier of Azure Front Door, which allows you to establish a private uh, communication between the Azure Front Door uh, edge with your uh, resources within uh, a virtual network or actually the other, um, what is it, service uh, that can be used with private link is uh, app, uh, app services as well. Awesome, awesome, that's a good deal. Well, hey, Dong, thanks for taking the time today to you know, really dive deep in Azure Front Door. I learned a, I I learned a ton of stuff today, and uh, super excited to find some time to you know play around with Front Door, and uh, appreciate you you know coming on and all the work that you do for our customers and 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 the great content. So, with that, just want to remind everybody if there are any things that you'd like to see, maybe you want to see more about how that reporting works. And Dong did mention that there are some new things coming with Azure Front Door. Make sure to leave a comment down below. And if there's things you want us to talk about, we take a look at those and maybe we can have Dong come back here and talk about some, some more Front Door. With that, have a great day. Have a great week. Dong, thanks again. Yep. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you for having me. Bye guys.